Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scar. Today we're going to take a look at a quote-unquote simple sphere packing method in TP using a TP 6.6. Um, I want to give a shout out to Fabian Buckrius for posting that sample file in the Facebook TP group where he modifies the uh, size of the particles using a p-search method like we uh, discussed. And today we're going to take a look at something a little bit different. I've got a method here where particles can start overlapping and what they do is they reposition and resize themselves uh, based on you know stuff <laughs> so let's go ahead and we'll get started uh, let's reset this um, of course we're using a standard film convention so our starting frame is 1000 TP is going to start on 1001 um, real time is off so the TP calculates every frame let's go ahead and get a TP in here all right, so the beginning thing we need to do is create a first dynamic set called system, which is where we're going to store all of our stuff. This way we make it modular, it can easily be turned into a black box. Also, we're going to have a corresponding system group. And inside that group, oops, we know we're going to have at least two groups. One of them we're going to call sources, or in this case we'll call it source surfaces. And this is going to be called packs. And packs are going to be what get packed into that space onto the source surfaces. Let's go to this, you know, just so I don't have to do a double S, let's call it sources. And this, and set it to ticks, great. All right, so we're going to need two rules. We're going to need to give birth, and then we're going to need to pack. So to do this, zoom way in, we're going to create a simple plane as our starting starting surface because you should always start simple when developing a complex project. If you don't start simple, you are going to be doomed by complexity, or at least get extra challenges because of complexity. Keep it simple. Make sure it works, it does what you think it does, and then go ahead and make it more complex. So one thing we need to do is bring this plane into TP. We're going to use layer to particle. Let's go ahead and put that on its own layer. We'll call this sources. TP, let's put it on its own layer. We'll call it TP. And make the active layer up there. Okay, so sources. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put them in the group sources. Instant shape on by default. Good job, Sevis. Sources. All right, so sources are going to create some packs. So each source who comes out is going to be creating some packs. In this case, we're going to start with two. Keep it nice and simple. No speed, no alignment difference. We're going to go ahead and birth on the surface of sources. And remember, if you are going to use more than one output from here, like position and alignment, that you cannot do this because these, without a particle to control the sampling, each one of these samples is going to be from anywhere on the mesh. So to do this properly, particle in, and let's use particle data. I, that tab menu, it's great, but I'm still not used to it. Boom, particle data. Let's go ahead and set the position and set the alignment. Make sure that's set to face. Great. Okay, so let's see. Let's hide our sources layer. Do we get what we think we're getting? Um, let's make sure TP is set to start at 1001. That way we get a nice uh, safe reset frame at 1000. Yay, all right, so we get our stuff. We get two particles, we get our red source grid. Alright, so now we need to, let's give these pack particles some properties of birth. We could build a whole system for you, but we've got one already under basic called at birth. And what we're going to need is some uh, shape for those. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a new layer. Or actually, let's create the object first. We're going to create a tiny little geosphere whose radius is 0.5, so that its overall diameter is going to be 1 meaning its size in TP is also going to be 1, because TP uses the longest edge of the bounding box of a particle shape as its size. Always the longest. Okay, so let's pick this. 
put that on its own layer, particle shape. Shapes, I'm sure. Okay. Okay. So now, just has some shape on there. We do, it's really, really small. So let's go ahead and modify this. You can see each particle at birth gets a random number between 0 and 1. That gets fed into a value to value to lookup table, basically, or a fit if you're coming from Houdini. And what this does is it says if the incoming value is 0, then use this is on the x axis. 0 is here, 1 is over here on the right. Get that interpolation and find out. And then, so if the incoming value is 0, um, our y value is going to be 0, but our y output for 0 is actually going to be 0.1. As our random incoming number goes from 0 towards 1, it's going to be going up in y up to a value of 1 at the maximum. So this is just a nice way of creating kind of a, a random weighted value. So most of our particles are going to be here in the lower zone, some are going to be in the middle zone, and only a few are going to be really big. So let's modify this so that uh, let's turn it off, edit on the fly, so that as we make changes, they show up immediately. Okay. Now we want a little more randomness in between these particles, so let's go ahead and change this. Well, we could also modify the. <clears throat> okay, this is a good example. All right, so what we have here is two particles overlapping. I'm going to use GreenShot. If you don't have GreenShot for screen capture software, you might want to check it out. It's totally awesome. And we've got a big particle and a small particle. And what we want to do is we want to figure out where should the small particle go in order to not be overlapping course the overlap we can tell because they're spheres we can tell by their radius or radii the big particle radius and the small particle radius we need to add those two together and that's going to tell us that this position needs to move up here all right so we're going to do that by setting up our pack rule pack rule says hey i want the packs to be searching for other packs. So each and every pack does a search. It's going to look for the group, which is his own group. So he's going to look for all of his siblings. We're going to set the radius to 50 just for this test. Um, based on your world size, you have to modify that. And what we want to do is we want to compare the sizes of these two. Now, in order to compare the size of a P search found PIDs, we need to use the particle data helper, not the operator. And we're gonna, not the age, but we're going to look at the size. Because we want to figure out, hey, which one's smaller, and we want to affect the smaller one. So we could use threshold, but I'm going to use a condition, which is an expression um, called uh, less than. So this says, hey, if A is less than B, output 1, which is true, or output 0, which is false. So let's do that. So if if my size is less than that size, then uh, then this pack is going to be modified. We don't want to modify the found PIDs just yet. We will in a little bit. But so what we want to do then is we want to figure out, okay, well, what is the minimum distance between the two? So to do that, we're going to look at their uh, the radius value or half their size. So we're going to multiply size by 0 0.5. Let's call this I call this half. Okay, so we take half of that size, half of the found particle size, the other found particle size. We're going to add those two together. This is going to be our minimum distance. So we're going to add that, we'll call this min dist. Okay. So we want to compare the minimum distance, you know, where do they where do they have to be versus where they currently are. So to do that, we're going to look at uh, found distances. Now remember, each and every pack is doing a search. 
the pack might find multiple particles. For each particle it finds, it outputs, you know, it can output um, all of this data per one that it finds. Uh, that's important to remember. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the found distance and compare it against the min distance. And what we want to say is if the found distance is less than the minimum distance, then we need to modify the smaller particle. So let's do that. Let's say, hey, if the found distance, in this case, we're going to subtract the minimum distance. What's the difference between them? And remember, if the found distance is smaller than the min dist, this value is going to be negative coming out. So that negative value is going to affect uh, how we create an offset vector. We'll get into that in a second. So if our distance is negative, use the threshold, say, hey, is it inside 0 to negative 9999? big negative number. So is it, is it in negative territory? If it is, and if my size is less than the other one, then I want to do something. Okay, and what we're going to do eventually is we're going to modify the particle position. For that we're going to use particle data. You'd like to use particle data because it allows you to pre-compute positions as well as set other parameters if you need to. Um, the position operator is great as well. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and use this for now. So what we're going to do then is we're going to say, OK, is negative. The difference between the two is negative, meaning they overlap. Then I want to create a new vector that goes basically in this direction and I want that to I want that the amount of that vector in that direction the magnitude I want that to be the difference in okay so this is our remember this is our minimum distance and this is our actual found distance so this m left over here that's the amount that we have to displace by to give us our new position, which will be out here somewhere. All right, getting a little messy there. But anyway, the point is, remember that, but we are calculating the difference between the minimum and the found, which is going to be a negative value. So in order to get a vector that offsets in the negative direction, we need to set up our uh, detect that direction in a certain way. Now it's really easy in TP. You can always just wire these up and we want to compare the position of the current pack with the position of the f pack that I found. And that direction, you know, if it doesn't offset in the right way, we can flip these inputs around to get the correct one, but you'll see. So we're going to use a math operator here to create that offset vector. You need a vector and a float. We're going to multiply the vector by the float. The direction is just a pure direction vector. It has no length, or it has a length of 1. And then our, uh, what is it, our difference, our difference here comes in this way. Getting a little bit cramped on space. OK, and so this offset vector, we need to add the small one's current position with the offset vector to get a new position. And some people have been asking about vector math a little bit lately, so let's just go through this real quick. So here's my current position, here's this guy's position. Basically we're going to get a vector, um, currently we're set up, actually it points this way, but the difference is negative, so it's actually going to end up offsetting in a negative direction. But we want to take this current position and we want to add another vector to push us out to this position. So we're just going to duplicate that math node, take the vect another vector. We're going to connect the vector to our current pack who is searching. When you connect a vector to a particle, it grabs the position. We're going to take that offset vector, add that offset vector to my current position, use this as my new position. Now if we did this right, 
it'll go into the right place. Yay! If these are flipped around, then it's going to go closer. Okay, so obviously we don't want it going closer. Let's go ahead and flip this around. If you analyze the logic for, uh, you know, distance uses position two as the starting position, position one as the destination, but we've got a negative uh, value coming out of here, so that actually makes that direction negative. Uh, it all works out. So uh, as you work more and more with vectors, that just becomes kind of a second nature. So we have this going over there. Now what we want to do is we want to get a little more complicated where we say, hey, if I'm off the surface, if if my particles are so big that one of them would be pu pushed off the edge, then I want to modify um, the size of the particles. So let's do this. Create you up here. Create like that. Like that. All right. <clears throat> so we can see clearly this guy is off the edge. And what we're going to do then is we're going to look and say, hey, this is the offset vector or the what I'm going to call the proposed position, the new proposed position for the particle. And I want to find out, well, where's the nearest point that's still on the surface? And if that nearest point that's on the surface is less than the minimum distance, if it's less than that, well then I need to move that particle that position on the surface and I need to make that particle smaller. Okay, so how are we going to do that? What we do has to do with our particles, our packed particles, knowing about their parent surface, the sources. So that's really easy. We just create a reference, right? Once you just create a reference between the two, either of them can look up data about, oh, who's my parent or who's my child. So always remember with setref, um, come up with a naming scheme or a scheme that works well for you. I like to think of particle from as the parent, particle to as the child. All right, so in here, now what we're going to do is we're going to access that parent. We do that by saying, hey, give me the pack particle. And the pack particle, of course, is the to me in that relationship. And what this does is says, hey, get the reference particle where the incoming particle is the two, meaning I have the child, now I want the particle who references the child. And what we want to do in order to use the nearest point on uh, geometry, we're going to use the geometry operation for that. This is uh, under geom particle, the closest point by surface. But we need to convert this particle into an object. That's really easy now in TP. Thank you, Cebus, for adding a particle A and particle B input onto the object. This converts that particle into an object, and now we'll be able to access uh, closest point by surface as well as that closest point distance. That closest point distance is going to tell us um, we're going to compare that against the minimum distance in order to determine hey, I need to change my size. So this is going to start to impact these conditions of how many true uh, conditions have to happen for certain things to happen. We're either just going to move the position or we're going to move the position and change the size. So what we're going to do is we're going to expose not the particle input here, but the position input. Something new that Cebus added uh, based on user feedback where we can now say, look at the object but use a position instead of a particle, and f using that position, figure out the closest point on the surface. Well, remember this addition over here, this is the offset plus our original position, so this is really what we're going to call a proposed position, kind of proposed pose. So let's use that proposed position as the origination, which is, you know, no, that's not the one that I wanted, nor is that. You know, the the proposed position is here, but the actual nearest is here. And what we're going to do is say, hey, what's the difference between those two? And if it's if the difference is really small, then it must be valid. But if the difference is big, like this, then it's off the surface. So that's pretty easy. We'll just use a threshold to say, hey, what's that closest point distance? How far is that proposed distance from the actual um, nearest surface position? Okay. 
we'll say is near or is close enough so is it inside is it between 0 and say oh, 0 0.5 <clears throat> and if it is if it is within that then we can go ahead and use that first condition and I know this is a little bit confusing again that uh, going through all this but once you actually go through and build the system you you'll understand why it's behaving the way it is and what you need to do in order to account for that alright so if it's not close enough meaning my particle is too far off the surface there well then I'm gonna have to do something else to it I am gonna need to meet those same initial conditions The particle is less than the other one there's overlap and now I'm gonna say hey no it's not close enough so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to actually access the the nearest valid surface position this is geometry point point data okay so geom points uses point data which taps into the geom particles output here which is point data type closest point on the surface comes in we say oh what's that position that's where we're going to move our particle okay so now our particles should go right onto the surface just like that well that's all good except he's too big again and so there's overlap so we need to actually modify that a little bit more and reduce his size so we're going to set it up in an iterative fashion where it's just going to multiply its current size by say 0.9 so every frame it's going to be decreasing until boom it stops it finds a valid uh, place and it's good to go now you can see there's a little bit overlap off that surface um, you can modify this and say oh just make it zero and and it'll find and stay on that surface so it has to be zero it has to be on that otherwise it just goes over there's probably a little bit wetter better way to organize some of that logic but you know kind of short on time these days all right, now we're not quite done because there's always a little bit more that we can do. What we're going to find out is that as we add more particles into this system, more packs, let's put, uh, say, 50 packs in there. All right, too many. Well, let's go ahead and, um, yeah, packs is too many. Let's try 10. Okay. So let's do 10. So you can see as we start to change these down like this, some of these never resolve. They just keep getting smaller and smaller. We've got multiple ones overlapping here on this corner. What we need to do is we need to start to adjust both the big ones um, and the small ones again. Well, let's go ahead and adjust the big ones. And what we're going to do, it's a little complex, so bear with me. What we're going to do is we're going to detect, is that minimum distance greater than this? Well, we've already determined, you know, is it close enough? But what we're going to do is set up a condition for greater than. And again, I, I haven't gone through all the different logic variants of this, but... but uh, there's probably ways to optimize this. Alright, so let's set up the minimum distance there. This goes into here. And what we're going to do is essentially just duplicate a bunch of this. We're going to end up modifying those source. Uh, or, I'm sorry, not the source, but the other pack, packs that it found. So even the big ones will end up shrinking down a little bit. Now we need to meet these same conditions. Is the one smaller? Is that negative? Um, is this on? but now we're going to add another one. So you can see it does get complex. Uh, nice thing about TP is you get a, a fully visual uh, scripting language. Um, let's go ahead and grab the size for this guy. Okay. Okay. So now you can see that they play a little more nicely together and they kind of jump into place. So that's good. Let's go ahead and save this so we don't have any unfortunate situations. Okay, and now we'll start to increase our amounts here and see if we can see how well the system does. So if we add 
pull a 20, well, you can see that we also get some more issues in here. Uh, we do get overlap. So let's actually go do this. I'm going to, oops, I don't know, fly is still off. This is where that danger can start to bite you. And we're going to go ahead and say, hey, take my size even and reduce that. Let's see if that helps out. Nope. I forget what it was. I had some solution that uh, made that work, but this one just must not resolve. That's unfortunate. Quite there. All right. Well, if we go ahead and modify this one's size anyway during that first operation, what we find is those pack in better. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we get even more. Yeah, eventually. Well, this one may or may not resolve. Mm, finally. Yeah, there it goes. That's awfully small, though. You should build in some sort of detection and, and kill off if they get too small, probably. Um, but you can see, kind of iterates over, and eventually it'll find a solution. Now, there's probably more elegant ways uh, to do this, measuring the difference in the offset vectors, and then um, setting the size based on that. Um, so, we go ahead and hand over this source file to you. Have fun with it. And we'll see you around.